Hello everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and I'm here with another tier ranking video and this one I will be tier ranking all of the dystopian books that I've read. Now I did include two books that technically would first be categorized into sci-fi or primarily be categorized into sci-fi, um, but I really only own like three sci-fi books and these two like also fit in dystopian, they take place in the future and the world kind of sucks. So you know, at me in the comments if you don't like it. <laughs> but the first on my list is definitely a dystopian classic. Probably the first book that a lot of people think of when they think of dystopians. And that is 1984. And for my tier ranking, I like to use the Harry Potter Owl's grading system. So this ranking goes O for outstanding, E for exceeds expectations, A for acceptable, P for poor, D for dreadful, and T for troll. Now I was assigned in high school, our class was allowed to pick between either reading 1984 or Brave New World, which I've just realized I did not include in my tier ranking. I have not read it since high school and I don't own it, so I think that's okay because I wouldn't really remember where to put it anyways. But anyways, so most of the class picked Brave New World and I'm quite the introvert and also I didn't really care because I didn't know much about either of them. So I went with the majority of the class so that hopefully I would be able to talk to less people about it. And now here I am talking about it on YouTube. But long story short, I did not read 1984 in high school because I was with the group that was reading Brave New World. There were like five people reading 1984 and I did not want to be in a small group. But I did later read 1984 because it is one of my boyfriend's favorite books. He's not a big book reader. He's a little bit more so now because I make him. JK, I don't make him. But he has always really liked 1984 and so of course I wanted to read it because I do like to read and I wanted to support any book that he likes. That being said, I'm not always into older books and this one for me was a bit of a boring read and I've liked other books that would be closely related to this better, like The Handmaid's Tale, for example. And so this one for me was just in the acceptable category. Next I have my first book that would probably be more so considered a sci-fi book, but I think it also lands in the dystopian realm, and that is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I did read the entire series for the Lunar Chronicles, but I never got like super into it and I was never like super excited to get to the next book. I just liked it well enough to continue. And so for that reason, this one also lands in acceptable for me. Next, I have kind of the, one of the books that was in the modern revamping of Dystopian, how they got all popular there for a while there a few years ago. This is one that I think everybody knows and that is Divergent. And this one definitely comes with some mixed reviews, which I agree with. For me, the first book was super fun. I was super excited for the series. I loved the world building and it, for me, was such a fun world. And then the rest of the series was a pretty big disappointment had the series maintained its level of goodness that was in the first book, it may have even landed in exceeds expectations, but the rest of the series really pulled it down and so this one was poor for me. Next I have what I think is probably the most kid-friendly middle grade book that is also a dystopian on this list. A lot of dystopians are more towards the young adult range rather than the middle grade range. And so I did really enjoy this one a lot as a kid, and that is The City of Ember. But again, this one suffered a lot of series lag, and I don't think I realized it was a series the first time I read it. And so there was a big gap between when I read the first one and when I read the rest of the series. So part of this might have been just that I was older and these are more middle grade books. But I do think the series kind of lagged off after the first one because I did really enjoy the first one a lot as a kid. And once again, if it had maintained 
where it was in the first one, it probably would have been in the acceptable category for me, but since the series did lag off, I also put this one in poor. Next, I have another dystopian classic, and that is The Giver. This one I also read for school, and I have seen the movie adaption as well, but I've never really been inspired to finish this series. It is a series, I think, of four books, but I've only ever read the first one. And for that reason, since I was not even inspired to finish the series, unlike with Divergent and Ember, I decided that this one belonged in the dreadful category. I think I was just very bored by this book as a kid, and part of that might have been that it was assigned for school, which kind of automatically set me against it. School books tend to not be the most entertaining books, and so there's kind of an automatic, they really have to work extra hard to earn me liking them, I guess, which is not fair to these books. But as a kid, that's the way it is. So yeah, maybe if I tried this one now that I'm older, I would like it better. But based on my memories, I have to put this one in dreadful. Next, I have yet another dystopian classic, but one that I did not read until I was much older. I actually read it for the first time this year, and that is The Handmaid's Tale. I watched the TV series before reading the book, and I love the TV series. I actually like the TV series better than the book. But I did enjoy the book. It really pleasantly surprised me since it is an older classic. I wasn't sure if I would actually enjoy the book version. I had heard that it is quite slow and boring and I tend to be turned off by that. So I went, up, went into it not being quite sure what I would think, but I did end up really enjoying it. It was very deep and I connected with it a lot and I feel like it told a really important story. Obviously a lot of dystopians are trying to tell really important stories, but this is one that I really got a lot of meaning out of. And so this one for me definitely landed in Exceeds Expectations, because that is exactly what it did. Next I have kind of the pinnacle of the YA dystopians that were really popular a few years back, and that of course is The Hunger Games. I recently did a reread of The Hunger Games in preparation for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes definitely got a very mixed review from me, but I'm kind of disregarding that from the original trilogy, and definitely this reread reconfirmed my love of the original trilogy. This does not for me suffer from series lag almost at all. The first and the second book are basically equal. The third book falls off a little bit, but for me, not very much. So for me, this is a super strong series that stays strong throughout. The message is really important and deep and strong, even though it is a YA dystopian, which sometimes the classics are a little heavier than the YAs, but this one definitely has that heaviness while still having the entertainment value of a YA one, as bad as that sounds when it's The Hunger Games. So for me, this one is just everything that I'm looking for in a dystopian. So for me, this is outstanding for sure. Next, I have the second book that probably is more so a sci-fi book, but I think falls within dystopian because it takes place in the future and Earth is so bad that humans have just left it behind completely. <laughs> and that is The Knife of Never Letting Go. I have only read the first one in this series but it definitely left me extremely excited to continue the series. It is such a unique concept that just reading this world was super fascinating all the way through. Definitely just going based on the first book, I would probably put it in outstanding, but since I haven't completed the series, I'm leaving some re reservation for the fact that it might have series lag even though I'm really hoping it doesn't, and so for now I'm just putting it in exceeds expectations because it definitely exceeded my expectations for a first book in a series, and I'm excited and hopeful that the series as a whole will be outstanding. For number nine I have one of the kind of less well-known YA dystopians that came out around the time of The Hunger Games, 
that was a little less popular and kind of just was mixed in with the torrent of dystopians that was coming out at that time. And that is Matched by Ali Condi. I got the first book of Matched from the Apparating Library, which is a library that shows up at various conventions and you bring a book and you take a book. And so it's definitely a keepsake book for me. But that being said, the series as a whole I didn't end up enjoying. The first book was enjoyable enough. Again, I'm kind of a sucker for world building, which is, and especially dystopian world, world building, which is part of the reason I think that I like dystopians a lot because they have such interesting world building. And so I enjoyed the first book because of the world building aspect and it was definitely an interesting read. But this one suffered from major series lag and the first one, even though it was enjoyable enough because of the world building, it wasn't one that really even stuck out a ton for me. But it did still interest me enough to finish the series. So going by those standards, for me it belongs in Poor, alongside City of Ember and Divergent. I did eventually unhaul the second and the third book in this series, and I kept the first book because again, it was enjoyable enough and it was a keepsake, so I had to keep it. Next on my list is The Maze Runner, which I feel like came out at the tail end of the whole dystopian craze. And this was another really big one. It got a movie and everything, and so I think I watched the movie first. And it was okay, but you know, the movie isn't always the best way to judge. And so I read the book and I was just super disappointed by this one based on how popular it got. For me, it was in no way enjoyable. It was super boring for me. And it didn't even for me reach like the Divergent level, let alone the Hunger Games level. And so because I kind of had somewhat high expectations of this one based on the hype, and the fact that it was, you know, a dystopian, which I really enjoy dystopians. This one ended up being a big letdown, and so I put this one in Troll. Next, I have The Program by Suzanne Young, and this is another one where I've only read the first one in the series. This one covers some kind of heavy topics, and I don't know how well it covers them. I don't really deal with any of the issues that are in the book. But for me, the concept was really interesting and it definitely kept me engaged. It does seem like a very long series. I think like there's at least like seven of these books and I have high doubts that the quality level will be maintained through seven books. But I am con planning to continue with the series because I did actually really enjoy the first book. So I'm being kind of cautiously optimistic with this series, and for now just placing it in the acceptable category. Next I have one of the oldest books on my bookshelf. This for me is my favorite standalone dystopian and simply one of my favorite books of all time, right up there with Harry Potter. And that is The Last Book in the Universe by Rodman Philbrick. Harry Potter is kind of the first book that got me into reading. I did not like reading on my own when I was younger, and the first book that I read on my own was Harry Potter. But even after that I was like, well, that was just for Harry Potter. I probably don't actually like reading as a whole. I like Harry Potter. But then I read The Last Book in the Universe, and that kind of was the final nail in the coffin on my being a lifelong reader. It's a very short book, but I just really loved it as a kid and definitely, obviously, it has a lot of nostalgia for me. I still really enjoy it a whole bunch. It's a quick read, so it gets a lot of rereading for me. And yeah, it's definitely just one of my favorites. Easily lands in the outstanding category. And it's a very little known book, so I definitely recommend to go check it out. It's a quick read. And it was my first ever introduction into Dystopian. Next, I have Replica by Lauren Oliver. This one I was really excited for because it had such a cool concept with the having two characters and first you read the book one way and get one character's perspective and then you flip it over and you get the other character's perspective. And it had a really cool cover, honestly, that was part of the excitement factor. And actually, I, this one is another one that probably actually fits better into sci-fi. 
because I don't think it actually takes place in the future. But whatever, it's on the list now. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I was super, super excited for this one. And then it really kind of fell flat for me. It just ended up not being as cool as I thought it was going to be with the concept and a little bit slow and just not quite what I was hoping. I think I probably had built it up a little bit too much in my head. <laughs> but it is just a duology. If it were a long series, I would probably give up with it on the first book. But since there's only two, I do think I'll plan on going ahead and finishing it. And so for that reason, once again, I'm going to put this in the poor category. The fact that there are only two <laughs> saved it from being dreadful because then I would just not even bother finishing it. <laughs> Next I have The Road, and I read this one recently, I read it this year, and I was reading it on a weekend where I was going to a wedding, and because my boyfriend was in the wedding but I was not in the wedding, so I kind of had a lot of free time on my hands while he was off doing wedding stuff, and so I actually read this book really quick, zoomed through it, and it did like keep my interest, and there were definitely some really great quotes in there that I enjoyed. But after doing that like really quick read and just kind of like being in it, it did not really have a whole lot going on. It definitely made some interesting choices, like the not having dialogue thing was really interesting. And I remember there were a couple weird things like that where I was like, oh, that's a very interesting choice. And so like all that kept me intrigued the whole way through. But again, nothing really happens in the book. And I don't think I would be interested in rereading it, which I'm a big rereader, so for me that's kind of a, a standard that I have for books on placing them in higher categories. And so for that reason, this one ends up in the poor category for me. I, although I did debate maybe putting it in acceptable, but I decided on poor. Next I have The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee, and this one was a real struggle for me. I just read this one I completed the series this year. I had read the first one the previous year, and I really liked the first one a lot. I was super excited for the rest of the series. It just was a really cool book to me. And then the rest of the series had a little bit of lag, but not like divergent level lag. And so I really super debated between putting this in Exceeds Expectations or Acceptable, but eventually I landed on putting it in the acceptable category. Although I do think I like it better than any of the other things that are in the acceptable category, but just maybe not quite as much as the books in the Exceeds Expectations category. And now we come to the final book, and this is my favorite dystopian series. The Last Book in the Universe is my favorite standalone dystopian, but this one is my favorite series, and that is Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. I think this is the first time where I realized dystopian was like a genre. With The Last Book in the Universe, I read that one when I was so young that it was just... I wasn't really thinking about genres back then so much. But then Uglies happened, and then like the big wave of dystopian happened like soon after Uglies. And that's kind of when I really discovered dystopian as a genre and fell in love with it. And so I credit the Last Book in the Universe with my love of reading, partially shared with Harry Potter, but I credit Uglies with my love of dystopia. This is definitely just my classic dystopian series. It is so fast-paced, so action-packed, such a fun read, while still having those important messages. It maybe doesn't get quite as deep as The Hunger Games, but the messages are there and it's just so good and such a fun read. So this one obviously, definitely, for me, lands an outstanding. And yeah, that's uh, all of my dystopian books slash some kind of sci-fi thrown in there to your ranked on the Harry Potter Owls grading scale. I hope you enjoyed and let me know what you think of my ranking down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Remember, words matter.